Thursday, which means it is time for a quick video tutorial. Okay, I'm not even going to say how quick or not it is. I'm just going to say video tutorial. Let me double check that I am actually transmittalating over here off stage left. All right. Okay, I see my hands moving. That's a really good sign. Hey, Rosie, appreciate you coming. All right, so here's the card that we're going to play with today. Now, this is a case, sort of. Hey, Marva, hi, Debbie, appreciate you guys coming. The other day, uh, you know, every week, Stampin' Up! publishes um, like a demonstrator newsletter, sort of. It's called Succeed Weekly, and all demonstrators get it. And it's got some business tips and some creativity tips, and it always has a project to make. And this is sort of the one that they did over uh, on this last one, and I really, really liked it. And I realized I had not played with precious pine cones, and I could not figure out why. So now I have played with precious pine cones. Hey, everybody, I appreciate you guys coming. So I made it kind of like the case, and kind of switched it up a little tiny bit, all right? I also used the Biggest Wish. I know I just used it, but it was out and it worked really well for what I wanted, and so that's what I did. And I also used this Nested Essentials die for the sentiments. This one is really fun. You get banners, you get rounded rectangles, and then you get these things. And they're all stitched, which is cool. All right, so let's get started. This will all be on my blog tomorrow, so you don't even need to like, you know, take notes or anything. I just realized I did not cut a label, so I'm going to need some very vanilla, and I'm going to have to go off screen to do that when I get to it. I'm so sorry. But first, we're going to make, essentially what we're doing is we are making our own designer paper. All right, so let's get started, and I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to make sure I've got the right piece of very vanilla. Now, this is a little smaller than a normal card front, so it is five inches long and three and, now let's see, I didn't think I wanted three and three quarters. Maybe that's just not right. Yeah, it's three and, hmm, should be three and five eighths, so let me be sure I grab the right piece. I may have grabbed the wrong piece. Yes, I did. See, I almost borked that there. So this is, let me redo that. Forget I did all of the above. All right, three and five eighths wide by five inches long. All right, and that's how we're, that's good, where we're going to start with our card front. Hey, Amy. Hi, Linda. Hi, Danette. Hello, everybody. Appreciate you guys coming. Now, the Precious Pinecone set is what we call reversibles. So what you do is when you put your stamp on the block one direction like this, you get the detailed image. So you can stamp that, and then you can clean it off and turn it over and stamp the image. And what they've done is they've made it so that the images are, in fact, symmetrical. All right? If you did this with a regular stamp, it would be off cockamamie, okay? Now, one of these leaves is actually designed to be a little cockamamie. It's a little more painterly looking, and that is this one right here. That's what we're going to start with, and I'm going to stamp it a few times around this panel. I'm using the detailed side, and I'm just going to stamp it a few times in garden green ink. All right? Now, let me just show you a trick that I learned. Gosh, it was at maybe... Maybe Creativity Now, our online event that we had in the spring about um, how to look random, but not look random, okay? So the way you do that is you're going to start by stamping, and then you're going to make a triangle. So I'm going to go here and here, and then I'll make another triangle, and I'll show you. And with an image that has a direction like this, I'm going to change it each time. So now I'm going to go over here to finish my triangle. See how I have a triangle? Now, to add the next one, I'm gonna go here to fill in this triangle. Does that make sense? Let's see, let's turn it this way. And I'm not putting them real close together because I have other leaves and everything. And then I'm gonna put some more right here, going off of the panel. And then I see a little spot there that I could do, and I'm gonna go off the panel like that. And then I think 
I'll just do an edge right here like that. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm gonna leave this open for the other one. Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and clean my stamp and I'm gonna turn it over on the block. And this time I'm still gonna use garden green, but I'm gonna stamp off first. Okay, that way I get another version of garden green, another depth. Now watch what happens. This is gonna be not exactly the same, but that's okay, because it looks cool. The biggest, hardest trick here is to remember to stamp off. I'm not saying that I ever did any like that where it didn't do it, but hey, Donna, I appreciate you coming, but I did. Okay. I really, really liked this, uh, this project that they shared with us on the Succeed Weekly this week. It's just, a it's just organic enough to appeal to me very much. Now that could have been really bad right there, but fortunately I got lucky. You know what they say, even a blind squirrel occasionally finds a nut, which is code for everybody gets lucky sometimes. Okay, so there's that in the garden green, and I'll set that aside, and I'm gonna close garden green so I don't look at, do anything goofy, like stick the next one inside of it. Okay, now, this one I'm going to stamp in, uh, let me be sure I'm grabbing the right one. Yeah, the, this is sort of the medium. There's two of them that are the same image, sort of, almost but this is bigger and this is littler. So I'm gonna use the bigger one and I'm gonna stamp the um, detailed side in shaded spruce. What I kind of loved about that project that they gave us was it put some greens together that I might not have put together just all by my own self. We'll put one right here. And I think I'll put one, I need to turn it I think. Like right there, and then I'm gonna put one over here. But I'm gonna turn it like that. All right, and let's see, I think that one, two, three, four, uh, uh, okay, I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna let that be good. I think it'll be okay. And then I'm gonna clean my stamp. Now this one is perfectly symmetrical, so it's gonna go right over the top of those images perfectly. But again, I'm gonna ink and stamp, and I can tell that I don't have a good image, so I wanna fix that before I get going. Because if it's bad on the initial image, I promise it won't get better when you've stamped it off. All right, so there you can just line it right up, and you can see the difference. You can see where I let it get a little bit weirdo, okay? So you see how that one lines up perfectly, and this one is just a little bit offset, and that's fine. It makes it look, I think it actually makes it look more organic and kind of cool. That is correct, Rosie. Thank you for that reminder. On the um, 4th of November, which is next, uh, no, it's not the 4th, the 2nd of November, sorry. You're right, is the, is the Thursday. But there will also not be a video on that Saturday evening. So neither Thursday nor Saturday will there be videos. Perhaps your, oh, your, your whole post says that right there, doesn't it? I'm trying to stamp and read, and that is not good, not good. Okay, so here we go. Isn't this fun? And there, there's even pine cones and stuff, which is cool since they named it Precious Pine Cones. But I really liked it with just the foliage, so that's what we're using. All right, there we go. So that's the shaded spruce. Okay, and one more. I'm gonna go little. And this is where my brain said, wait, you're gonna use what color? And it was old olive and it worked perfectly. It was beautiful. So we're gonna do the detailed side first. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in some spots here. But I think I wanna go this way, there we go. With the old olive. And we're gonna put another one right there, like that, okay? And then I'll clean off my stamp. Hey, Jean, appreciate you coming. Yeah, Debbie, we would love to have you at a retreat. There'll be one next year. 
All you got to do is sign up. Oh, wait. You're, never mind, Debbie. Never mind. I had you confused with a Debbie customer. Sorry. Yes, we will miss you. This is going to be like the first year that you aren't there. I'm. You and Gloria will be missed very much. <sighs> My brain, I tell you. Y'all, I'm just saying. One of these days you're going to wake up and you're going to read about the crazy woman from Georgia <laughs> who has been interred forever because she's just goofy. And they'll be like, yep, yeah, she didn't know who was on her team. She couldn't keep the Debbies straight. Yeah, it was really sad. She thought her dog was a pony. Yeah, sad. Okay, so there is the there is the basis. Thank you, Maria. I appreciate that. And then I'm going to add, there is another image right here. And now this one's kind of fun because you can actually stamp this like that and clean it off and stamp over the top. Whoop, stop it, stop it, stop it, there we go. Stamp it off, and you could do like that, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to do the detailed dot side, and we're just going to add some of those. Yes, that's it. It's because it's cooler and the leaves are falling. Let's go with that. And we're just going to stamp that around a few times, kind of filling in the blanks, but also overlapping the leaves, okay? Don't don't not overlap leaves. You kind of want to do that. You also don't necessarily need to fill up every single little bit of, of clear space. All right, and let's see. I think we want one right there. Perfect. Done. All right. So there is our DSP. Now, what I did is when I cut this, the, the sample that Stampin' Up! made, the image or the, uh, the project that they made, did not cut equal size panels. And, and I thought that was kind of cool. And so what I did is I just cut like an inch and a half and like an inch and a half. So those were equal, but then the last bit was big, okay? And I'm gonna and try to keep them together. You can always put them back. It's kind of like a not very complicated puzzle, like a puzzle for three year olds. But some days, <laughs> some days you got to be careful. Okay, so you can put it on this way with the big end that on this side, or you can do like I did on my panel or on my sample, which is to go this direction. So either way, you just wanna be sure that you keep them all together. Although I suppose if you really wanted to get crazy, you could do like that and make it weird, but my brain just kind of shorted out doing that. All right, now I'm gonna clean off my hands a little bit, little bitty bit, cause I'm pretty sure I have ink on me. And I am going to take one of my pecan pie, um, mats. It's going to be a mat even though it's going to be angled. And I'm going to adhere that with some liquid glue to the front of a thick, very vanilla... Come on. This is a brand new bottle. There we go. A f the front of a very thick, very vanilla um, card base. And I'm going to put it on a little bit of an angle like that. Just like that. And then I'm going to put some um, dimensionals on the back of each of my panels because I want them popped up. All righty. Oh, thank you, Maria. That's very sweet. I got a. I have to reiterate that I did get this DSP idea from the Stampin' Up sample this week. They give some really good ideas. I mean, sometimes the cards are a little simplistic, and you're like, meh. But sometimes they give you some really good places to start and some very good creative ideas, little springboards, if you will, like this one. I springboarded it. You know why? Because there was the, um, the Paper Players Challenge this week uses angled panels. And I thought, well, I bet I could make that into an angled panel instead of a straight panel. And so I did. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to just lay this out with a little bit of space between. Make sure you're still, you know, right sides up and wrong sides down. Figure out where you want each piece. And I think that makes me happy. 
I might angle it just a little more like that. Do what makes you happy when your brain says, yep, there it is. That's when you want to put it down. Okay. So now we'll just take off these. Uh... Oh, oh, sure. Hang on, Stephanie. Just a minute. You know what I should do too is do that. But yeah, let me, sw let me flip this over. There we go. Better? All right. All right, so I'll take my uh, little paper covers off here and make sure I kept it right direction. And then we're just going to put it back in place. You're kind of just making sure you don't go off of the card base there. And then we'll do the second piece. Like this. Finn's been giving me the hairy eyeball all morning because he thinks he's pretty sure it's time to go for a walk. And I was like, I know. I'll get my video done, and then we're going to go get the mail. Even if there is no mail yet, we're going to go get the mail. Yay! I'm glad I saw your comment, Stephanie. I, I would have just kept going. I would have just kept going. And then y'all would have been like, I have no idea what you just did. All right, one last check that I am correct on my layout. Before I push it down, be sure I'm straight. And I'm what I'm looking at here is this gap, okay? I just want it to be straight with the other pieces. All right, so there we go. Now I'm going to take some stamp and seal, and this is plus, um, and I'm just going to put a little line of it right there, like that. And then take some Calypso Coral Braided Trim. And we're going to make a little bit of loop-de-loop. -loop. Okay, so this is a loop-de-loop. -loop. When I say on my, on my directions to make a loop-de-loop, -loop, this is what I mean. All right, and you're just kind of going to want to make it like that. All right, and we're going to leave it like this until we get our sentiment atop it. I'm going to cut it a little bit longish in case I need to adjust it, all right? But I'm now going to, here's a little trick. You can kind of, if you do this before you cut your sentiment, see, I've already, I just confirmed it wasn't nearly long enough, was it? it wasn't nearly long enough, and this is probably not long enough either. So we'll try that again. I guess I could have looked at my, at my, at my sample. That might have helped. We'll put that like that, and then like that, and we'll leave. I'm going to leave that this time, showing much, much better. Much better. Okay, I'm going to cut myself a sentiment here using this nested shapes, and I think I'll stand. I'll make two just in case I screw something up. You know, because that's how I roll. I always screw something up, so I like to have a second one waiting in the wings, as it were, like an understudy. Just like having an understudy. There we go. Okay. So I just made two of these just in case. All right. Now I'm going to take my biggest wishes and I'm going to stamp happy in pecan pie. Hey, Debbie, appreciate you coming. Thank you, Faith. All right. I'm going to stamp happy in pecan pie, kind of right in the center of that. And then I'm going to stamp hello in garden green. Now, I, I don't, I am probably a minority here, but you should know that garden green is like not my favorite color. I wonder if it was garden green or if it was... I think it was, I'm going to use shaded spruce. I just like it. Is Mary mumbling? I hope Mary's not mumbling. She was over by the cutting machine, so that might have translated as a mumble. I'm going to stamp hello, hello, hello in shaded spruce like that. And so there's my sentiment. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that because I feel pretty confident. I'm feeling pretty good about it right now. There we go, yep. And I'm gonna put my dimensionals on my card base. 
like so. And when you do this, I, I do it like this because that lets me work around that twine without worrying about where the twine is, all right? You only need a single layer of dimensionals versus putting another one on top of each one to make a double stack. You don't need a double stack because the twine is pretty flat. And then we're just going to stick that right there. Now, it's kind of an optical illusion here, okay? You want to be eyeballing this top with the top of the card base and the bottom with the bottom of the card base. That's your only straight thing here, okay? So be checking that. Now, what I like to do after I've got it adhered is if I need another little bit of support, like down here, I'll just take a dimensional and slide it under with my tweezers, like that. I'm gonna do the same right there too. But by keeping it close in, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to see my dimensionals when I put my sentiment on, and now I know exactly where they need to be, right? There we go. Okay, now to finish this off, a couple of brushed brass butterflies. Thanks, Susan, I appreciate that. Hey, Carol, appreciate you coming. I'm gonna put a big in right there, and I'm gonna put a big in. I think I'll put a big in here and maybe a little one. No, I'm gonna go all big, all big. It'll get kind of lost otherwise. I'm gonna put a big one right there. And there's our card front. Do, da, da, do. All right, now on the inside, all I'm going to do is create a little bit more foliage. And I'm gonna use the large garden green. Where did you go? Let's be sure we have it wrong side down, right side up. I'll stamp this in garden green in the corner. And because it'll save me ha multiple times of having to um, <laughs> keep cleaning my stamp, I'll go ahead and do my very vanilla envelope at the same time. I have got dimensional covers just everywhere. And I want to show you, you guys can, uh, I'm going to put these in the other corner opposite where I did on the sample. So you can put them anywhere that makes you happy. Put them like that. And while I have it out, I'm gonna clean that off. That is just an accident looking for a spot. Mm -mm -mm. That was really close right there. Yeah, Jean, you do need to try. And this is a great set for doing it because it's beautiful. And like I said, you can also use pine cones. Now this is my envelope. So I'm gonna put the garden green, clean it off, turn it over. ink, stamp off, and stamp. And put that aside, ink, stamp off, and stamp. Obviously, you could use a whole different color ink if you wanted to for the second image. That would be perfectly wonderful too. Now I'm gonna use my shaded spruce one as well. And this is gonna be the larger of the, I, I'm gonna, that's a pine bow, I'm certain. So I'm gonna use the larger one there. And I'm gonna put him, see this is my envelope. Is this my envelope? No, it's my panel. Put him right there like that. And then we'll do our envelope. And he's gonna, this one's gonna go below because of the way I stamped that image, which is fine. It's nature. Nature doesn't have rules. Well, I mean, it has a few rules, but whether it, the bow goes on top or the bottom, that is not a rule. I got too much stuff right here. All right, stamp off. This is the shaded spruce again, remember? And I've turned that image over. Just line it up and stamp. Do the same on our inner panel. Line it up. I can't see, I can't see. There we go and stamp. All right, then we'll close this. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. And I'm just gonna add a couple of three of the little dotty dots, the dotty dots. Like that. And the same on the envelope. Oh, I need to get, I gotta do my flap. Now, 
since I made my own DSP, I'm going to stamp my envelope flap, and I decided to let my recipient see all three of my bows. So now I'm going to take my little bow, little bow, oh little bow, and he is Olive, Old Olive. Thanks, Carol. I'm gonna stamp him right there, like that. Clean this off. Remember, your envelope is your first chance to make a good impression. Don't waste it. And we'll stamp right over the top. Like that. And then because I can, and because I still have all of the things out, my gosh, what kind of a messy stamper am I? Goodness gracious, I, I got, <laughs> don't be like me. Okay, we're just gonna do one little stamp like that right there. And that's it. I'm just gonna put my card together a little bit. Thanks, Debbie. I really like it. I cannot believe it's been out for like, what, uh, two months? And I have just now inked it? That's crazy. It's just crazy. I'm telling you, it's craziness. Little liquid glue to adhere it to my pecan pie mat. Now, you know, the other thing you could really, really do, really, really do, okay? Work with me here. Take a full-size piece of your cardstock, your very vanilla, make DSP on the whole shoot and match, and cut four card fronts down to size, which is three and five-eighths by five, okay? You could do that, and you could just whip out four cards. Boom. Boom, chakalaka. You certainly could do that if you were smarter than I am. Because if I was really smart, that's what I'd have done. Okay. And then we'll put this inside. <coughs> yep, the reversibles, they've been around for just a couple of, a couple of three catalogs now. Um, but I, I think this one may be my favorite. I love it with this foliage. Um, there we go. And because they are so flat and beautiful, you can add a brushed brass butterfly even on the inside. Like that. <gasps> Isn't that so pretty? So pretty! Remember, no video next Thursday or next Saturday. Um, I will be on my Zoom the Craft Room, though, if you are a customer and have the link or my team. And I'm just going to trim that off right there like that. Okay, guys. And there it is. Two happy hellos from the Precious Pine Cones and Biggest Wish. All right. I will see you guys on this Saturday night for the ninth Saturday before Christmas. And then there will be a bit of a gap. And I will be back the week after next. So like the week of the fifth or sixth, whenever that is. All right. Appreciate you guys spending part of your week with me. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I will see you on Saturday. Ta.